What's going on guys? Today we're going to dive very, very deep. I've been doing a lot of research and this great resignation thing that happened about seven, eight months ago is still going on. And I have some personal insights what this is going to take us. In 2022, domestic violence is going to explode because, hold on a second, that's a little bit better. Domestic violence is going to explode in 2022 because whenever you have a situation, you're going to have repercussions. And this is one of the things that's going to happen because I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos of people who have quit their jobs. And I am totally shocked at the number of people who have quit their jobs without another job already in the shoot. I mean, let me go ahead and tell you about, you know, recently I made a move, right? One of the things I did before I moved here is I tucked away X amount of dollars where I could pay my rent for three years if I had no money coming in. So when I make a move, like take the Porsche, I could have bought the Porsche in 2017, but that would have taken a big hit of money and I didn't like it. So what I did is I made my business better and I got the Porsche in 2020. Actually, I got two, I bought one, then I traded that one in and got another one and I paid cash. And one of the things that I'm getting, I am consistently seeing is a lack of long-term planning. Um, I'm gonna get to why I feel that 2022 is gonna be an explosion of domestic violence. And I'm gonna relate a story to you that someone I actually know, and this is where the personal insights come in. I know someone that quit their job before the pandemic. And she was 42 years old, and then she liquidated her retirement fund. And she had one good year, just one, where she didn't have to work, she didn't have to worry about money. And then the money ran out and she is one of the people who's going to be globally reset. She's going to go from a house to living in her car. This is someone who had a stable job, who had stable income, but because she made the decision to quit her job. And, you know, we were talking about it because I'm like, I didn't know her when she made the decision to quit her job, because if, she, if I did, I would have talked her out of it. That's something that I'm really good at. Like I had a friend that wanted to sell her business and I literally talked her out of it and said, hire someone to run your business for you. Keep the business, it's a cash cow, don't get rid of it. And I now have personal insights of the impact of the global reset. Guys, <laughs> this is 2022 and 2023 are gonna be some monster years for a lot of people. And I mean monster, not in a good way, because what's going to happen? Like I said, go ahead and look at Great Resonation. I quit my job. And also take out of the queue the number of YouTubers who've had a YouTube channel for two or three years because they may have quit their job, but they still have income. So that's really, really different. If it's a YouTuber who quit their job and they have a sizable audience, they could be making two to three or four times more money than they were making when they were working. So those folks don't count. Those folks don't count. What we want to put into the bucket are the number of folks who don't have YouTube channels who quit their job without another job already secured. And I am beginning to see that many people are not like me. There's no way that I would have moved into this expensive place without knowing my financials, knowing that I can be up in here three, four years, whether I had money coming in or not. And I'm beginning to see that a lot of people have a problem with long-term planning. This is something I see. This week I filed not one, 
Uh, I filed one today. Tomorrow I'm going to file another one. I'm going to file three police reports because this is something that happens quite a bit. I have someone that would rent a car and they would get the keys and then they would instantly go late. And then that right there happens quite a bit. And I have most people able to catch up. But what happens is they take it a few steps further. They will instantly go late. They will stop communicating. They will not bring the car back and they will not pay. And I am sitting here like, what is your long term plan? And I was talking to a friend that she said, they don't have a long term plan, man. She said they do stuff and they hope it's going to work out. And that's what I feel that these people who have quit their jobs, quit their jobs are hoping that it's going to work out because there is no long term concrete action plan. It is fueled on hope. And there's a number of you like, go ahead and look at, I put in the YouTube search bar. It's like, I quit my job and you will see a number, mostly millennials, mostly millennials, folks, my age are not doing this foolishness. They're quitting their jobs and they have these wild ass schemes of it working out. And what's going to happen? Cause like I said, it, the great resignation started like seven, eight months ago, right? So as people go through the stress level, like I watched what happened to my friend, you know, she was hanging out, going to parties, enjoying her life. And then I noticed about four months ago, her stress level, because uh, we, we met up and she had broke out in hives because she was so stressed because she did not have a viable long-term action plan. She just quit her job because she hated her job. And right now we have a number of folks who are quitting their jobs. And let's, let's go ahead and classify these people. If you drive a forklift in a warehouse, that's on this work. There's nothing wrong with that, but that is a indicator of your skill sets. And if you're driving a forklift in the warehouse or you're working in Amazon sorting packages, that's all you can do. And I'm not trying to be demeaning, but that is the skill set that you have. And that's all you have. And until you qualify yourself for a better job, that's all that you're going to be suited for. And I don't think a lot of people really understand that because I consistently see and I'm going to classify these people and I'm not trying to be dismissive or demeaning, but people who have a low skill wage skill set, a low wage skill set. Uh, this would be, in my opinion, driving a truck. Once again, I hear some truckers can make fantastic money working in the warehouse, doing DoorDash, Uber, Lyft. All of these fall under the umbrella of low skill wages, low skill, low wage skill sets, because virtually anybody can do these jobs. And if you're doing a job that they can hire someone off the street and literally in a few hours, get them up to speed where they can do the same job that you're doing. My friends, my people, you have a low wage skill set. And I'm here to tell you what's going to happen in the future. If you're in the position of a low wage skill set and you're not doing anything to level yourself up, you're going, it's just a matter of time before you will not even have a job. Just a matter of time. I'm talking two, three, four, five years. And once they get autonomous vehicles and autonomous trucks on the road, I feel that's like 15 years out, correct me if I'm wrong, but once that happens, the Uber drivers, the Lyft drivers, the truck drivers, your job is gone. You know, I feel that there will still be truck driving routes for people who are delivering stuff off the grid because they're going to need to have a grid for these autonomous trucks and vehicles to run on. But literally, when autonomous vehicles and cars and trucks come into play, this is going to kill a massive number of jobs of low wage skill set jobs. It's going to kill them and it's going to happen. 
like I said, you know, people disagree with me that, you know, it may be, be it's going to happen in five years. I think it's 15, 20 years out. But once again, it's going to happen. And then Uber and Lyft are going to get rid of all their drivers and they're going to probably have human drivers for special occasions. Maybe they're Uber Lyft, they're Uber Black or something like that. I don't know. I don't know what the future holds in that regards, but I do know that once this happened overnight, a bunch of jobs are going to disappear. And if you are in possession of the low skill wage set, you need to be on a voracious edu self education process right now. You need to be working on your self education right now. You cannot wait until this happens because when it happens, it's going to be too late. You're going to be behind the eight ball. And one of the things that I foresee in this, because if you will see, there are married people and parents who have quit their jobs. And this is a signal for the danger zone, because just like I watched what happened to my friend, someone I personally know, her stress level went through, uh, you know, I'm not mentioning any names because I don't know if she watches this channel, but she went from a position where her life deleveraged step by step. And now the place that she lives in, they raised the rent $350 and she was already suffering. So now she's about to be homeless at the end of the month. And this is a scenario that's going to play itself out over and over and over in that group of people who have resigned their jobs because they were sick of their jobs. You got married men, married women, husbands, wives, dads and moms who have quit their jobs. And right now, how did we get here? The stimulus economy, the stimulus suspended and animation economy. I am completely baffled and bewildered at the number of people who rent my cars and then hope to make money. Cause this is the situation that's going on. I filed this police report today. This girl rented the Range Rover and she paid. Then she went, she missed payments. I cut it off. And then she called me and she said she got stranded with her children, with her children. And I'm like, I take the, the position of I'm like Georgia Power. Georgia Power will turn your power off. They don't care if your mama is in your house on life support. They don't care. They will turn your power off. And that's the position that I had to take. And like one of the things I've learned is once I turn these cars off, I don't turn them back on. However, something strange happened. She told me the car was at Town Center Mall. So I go up there because I've learned because with the GPS, it will get you. If you look on the map, it will tell you exactly where the car is. Right. But it will give you an address that might be three, four, five hundred feet away. So I went up there and I looked for the car and I drove around town center mall for an hour and I couldn't find the car. And then the GPS stopped working and then she blocked me. So my assumption is that this person has my vehicle is driving my vehicle and has no intentions of paying me. Let me go ahead and say this again. This person has my vehicle is driving my vehicle and has no intentions of paying me. And this was a, a, a contactless uh, pickup. She never saw me, so she don't even know what I look like. She never saw the poor. She, so she, she had no clue, but this is something that I consistently see with a certain demographic that they will rent a car and hope to make money. And she has children. She said a nine year old and a five month old. And honestly, I feel that she's driving my vehicle, that she somehow has circumvented the GPS system and she's driving it. Now, here's where the great resignation and these people kind of match up. 
I have watched YouTube video after YouTube videos of people going on talking about how their job wasn't fulfilling, how that they didn't feel that they were valued. And this is where I bring up Earl Nightingale lead to feel because I used to feel the same way. I used to feel that way with my job because one night I ran a report and I ran the wrong report and I saw that I had did $38,000 worth of work in my eight hour shift. And I was like, forget 20 bucks an hour. Give me, give me two or 3% because 1% of $38,000 is $380. They gave me 2%. My income dramatically goes up. So I know what it's like to be disenfranchised. I know what it's like to feel undervalued. And at the time I had a skilled job. I was a medical laboratory technologist. I had a skilled job and I still felt that way. I felt that I needed more money. I felt that I needed more perks. I needed more bennies. And I, I know what that feels like. However, it took me going through my own global reset because that's what happened to me. Because like I said in my early video, the global reset started in the 1970s. I went through my reset where I came out from the apartment, went to being homeless to living in a boarding house. And thank God I came across Earl Nightingale because Earl Nightingale reformatted, rewired my thinking because I was so dissatisfied. I was so upset that they were doing this to me because I felt that I needed more. And that's what many people who are doing the great resignation is, but they don't understand. They have not qualified themselves for more. They've not qualified themselves for more. And the job that you have is a signal to the level of preparation you have for success. And until I started to become a voracious student, reading, learning, attending webinars, attending masterminds, and just pushing my, myself up to I qualified myself to a seven figure year. I qualified myself to make six figures in a month. I qualified myself. And this is the missing ingredient that all of these people in the great resignation are missing. They haven't qualified themselves for more money. And this is where we're leaving the stimulus economy and we're moving to the real economy and the real economy will be meaner, tougher than anything I can say on this YouTube channel, because the real economy means that Georgia power is going to cut your power off. Atlanta water is going to cut your water off. If you don't pay those bills, that's the real economy. And what's going to happen? There's, you know, we're, we're like, we're, it's like, you know, it's Christmas time. Once again, Black Friday, worst Black Friday in 70 years, which means that real marketplace economics are starting to filter into the economy, which means that stress, and this is why domestic violence is going to explode in 2022 because we're leaving the stimulus economy and we're going back to the real economy and the real economy comes with repercussions and a lot of stress. Uh, my friend is super stressed out right now, super stressed out because she doesn't know where she's going to go into the month. And I know many of you like, Hey, this is a friend. She can move in with you. Uh, that's a negative. That's a Roger. That's a negative. Um, uh, Next woman I live with, I'm going to be married to, or we're going to be contemplating marriage. So I, I thought about helping out, but once again, going back to the origination point, how did she get there? And it was her way of thinking. Cause like I said, if I knew her at that point, I would have talked her out of it. Cause I'm really, I'm a really, really good long-term planner. And that, that's, that's a gift of mine. I can plan like my life is planned out for the next 30 years. And I would have talked out of it because like my friend who wanted to shut down her cell, I was like, don't do it, Dina. Don't do it. Don't do it. You're going to regret it. And I talked her out of it. And I would have talked her out of quitting her job because here's the thing as she has witnessed 
Some of these people who are part of the great resignation, not most of them, have a little chunk of money. And I'm going to tell you, saving money takes a long time, but spending money, it goes like that. The money it took you five years to save, you could spend in a month or two or three. Easy, easy. Because if you're not, because th this is one of the things, like once again, I moved to this fancy place and I knew that my cost of living was gonna go up. So number one, I don't have no debt. Uh, I got one car payment. I don't really consider that debt because the business pays for that. And you know, I'm ready to ride out this reset. I'm ready to ride out because I got money in the bank. I've got a business that makes me money every month. I have options. And one of the reasons I'm in have options is I understand how fast money moves. Save money with no money coming in will go so quick. It will go so quick. It will be gone before you know it. Like my car rental business. Uh, this is a, a issue that I have. Money trickles in 300 to 1500 bucks a day, depending on how the rentals go, right? And if I have someone that has a $1,500 or $3,000 repair, literally what I make in a week could go back to fix that one car. And it's the same thing with your savings. If you do not have money coming in, you're saving. And this is why I talk about having a long-term emergency fund, a short-term emergency fund, and a family operating account because this provides you three layers between you and calamity. So if you've got a long-term emergency fund, a short-term emergency fund, and a family operating account, that gives you like a year buffer between you and being on the streets. But once again, people don't wanna do the right things. They don't wanna qualify themselves for more money. And this is why the stress level, right now, America is an incubator. And right now the stress is going through the roof. This is why crime is going up. This is why the murder rate is going up because people are stressed out. And this guy, this mild mannered guy who took part of the great resignation, he's going to come home and he's going to be so stressed because he's going to see his savings evaporate and his wife is going to say the wrong thing to him and he's going to slug her. He's going to punch her in her face. This guy who's never showed any signs of aggression, who's never showed any of those tendencies, he's going to beat the shit out of his wife because he's stressed. And you got wives who are going to go off on their husbands. You got, and you know who's going to be the worst victim of all this? The children. There's a lot of children that are going to be abused because of this global reset, because their parents made bad decisions and their parents are going to get stressed and the little kid's going to be like, but mommy, I want some cookies. We don't have no cookies around here. Stop whining. Stop. You. And that kid's going to be abused. That woman's going to be abused. That husband's going to be abused. This 2022, go ahead. Keep track of it. Check the news headlines. Domestic violence will be at an all time high. All time high. Because people get caught up. And I remember this saying, I don't know who said it. It's easier to influence a mob than it is to influence a single person. And I've seen this. And there were many people who got caught up in the great resignation. I'm going to quit my job. They don't treat me well. I'm more valuable. Let me just tell you this. If you don't have six figures in your checking account that you made in a month or two, you're not that valuable. I know that's me being dismissive and demeaning. You're not. If they can go on the street, and find another monkey and train that monkey in a day to do what you do, you're not that valuable. All right, you're not that valuable. And this is like my friend, you know, I'm just sitting here like, one of the worst things to happen is to see someone you care about struggle. But once again, I don't have a cape. 
I am not Captain Save Them. I will let you fall because how did we get here? That decision that was made two years ago. That decision to quit her job. That was the, the catalyst for everything that's happening right now. And like I said, God, I wish I had known her because I would have talked her out of it. Because people want to be free. People want to do what they want and they want more time. They want more benefits. They want more perks. Um, I've been working from home for the last 12 years. How did I get that? I qualified myself. I qualified myself to work from home. Right now, like today, I'll tell you about my day. Today, I had to go to the office. I had to rent out some cars. I had to follow one police report. And then I came back here and I'm doing this video. And if it wasn't for the car rental business, because like, I gotta think about that over the holidays because one of the things with the car rental business is it imposes a lot of demands upon my time and at any point, like I have a separate phone for the car rental business, that phone can ring at nine o'clock at night because somebody like this happened this week. Someone lost the keys to the Range Rover. And like, that doesn't sound like a big thing. And this Range Rover had a second key, but the second key doesn't open up the doors. So when people like, I feel like I'm managing children because they look like adults. Their driver license says they're adult, but the responsibility is like way low, way low because, you know, this happened to me the other night. I couldn't find my keys, right? So what, I, you know, I'm a pretty organized and orderly person. Like my keys go in one spot. So I was able to go trace. I was like, okay, this is where I normally put my keys. And I went to my office and my keys weren't there. And I said, okay, sit down, think about it. What were you doing? And I got these sweatpants that, you know, sometimes my wallet and keys fall out of it. So I went to the sofa, pulled back the cushions, boom, there were my keys. That took me five minutes to find my keys because I have a system and a process. So these people who are quitting their jobs, they're not organized. They're not long-term planners. They don't have a long-term emergency fund. And it's just a matter of time before the pressure cooker of stress starts to create these very bad outcomes, very, very bad outcomes. And it's going to be bad because a lot of kids are going to be abused. A lot of kids are going to be abused. You ever been in Walmart or some store? and this single mom and she's going off on these kids and she's cussing them out. You ever seen that? Imagine that times a hundred thousand. You're gonna have single moms who are gonna be losing it. You're gonna have dads who are gonna be losing it because they all got caught up in the, the great resignation and I'm quitting my job and someone's gonna hire me and pay me what I'm worth. No, they're not. Go, you know, that job you had was an indicator of your worth because it is very rare that someone would go from making $30,000 to $150,000 unless they start a business. It's very, very rare. It's not normal because typically your income range, you stay within it. This is why when you get a new job, they ask you, how much do you make on your last job? And you tell them and they give you a little bit more. It's, it's the game. It's the, it's the way the game is set up. And 2022 is going to be a serious year. It's going to be a serious year. We're going to have dramatic and spike in murder, dramatic spike in domestic violence, a dramatic spike in crime because people are going to be stressed. Like, I normally don't carry a gun. Normally I didn't. Now I carry daily. I have it on me all the time because I just see what's coming. And many people's like, he's fear mongering. So 
telling you what's going to happen before it happens is fear mongering because on this channel, I've had a really good track record, pretty good track record. Cause like there are many people who are saying that Bitcoin's going to hit hundred K before the end of the year. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think it's going to hit hundred K. I would say that publicly on record. I don't think it's going to hit hundred K and I have a really good track record with my predictions. You, if you've been a long time subscriber, you can see that I'm, I, I, I hit about 90%. I'm hitting at about 90%. So if me sitting down and having a conversation with you and saying, Hey, this is going to happen and how to avoid this, like number one, don't quit your job and don't get caught up in this great resignation stuff. Do not quit your job until you have a solid plan. And more importantly, you need to have some money in the bank because once you quit your job, especially if you do something as foolish as quit your job and not have another one, your money that you have saved up. Like I remember when I was in that boarding house and when I got my job at rent a crate, it took me six weeks to find a job and I had $4,000 saved and I spent like 1600. So I almost spent half of my savings in six weeks and it took me a year to build that savings account. It took me a year. And when I got my job at rent -a crate I instantly saved 20%. Boom. Not in investments, just cash money in the bank because you never know what's going to happen. And that is a habit that I elevated. At one point I was saving 50% of my income. Not in investments, just straight up in the bank. I know, you know, many people on YouTube will tell you that that's foolish and you have to pay an inflation tax and everything. But I'm going to tell you, I sleep well at night knowing that I have all those Benjamins up in the bank. I sleep well at night knowing that if all of y'all said, screw Glendon Cameron, we're not watching his YouTube videos. We're not buying his products. Screw Glendon Cameron for the next five years. I'm good. Actually, I could probably do 10. Honestly, I'm in a position where I can retire if I wanted to. So, you know, and the burn rate will have to come way down. I could not. Well, actually, let me think about that because I don't have normal people bills. I don't have I don't have multiple car payments. I have three cars. I have one car payment. I don't have any credit card debt. I do have a loan, but that's a business thing. So one of the things that you have to understand and you have to acknowledge that if you're going to be part of this great resignation and you do not have a solid plan and what does a solid plan consist of? Number one, you got a long-term emergency where you got like fun with 25, 40 K in it. That's part of a long-term plan. That's part of a plan. If you don't have a long-term emergency fund, some cash over here to the side and you quit your job with no money and no job, it is only a matter of time before the wolves start barking at your door. Woof, 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 woof. It's just a matter of time, just a matter of time before you start to feel that pressure, that stress before your car payment goes unpaid, before your apartment or your mortgage goes unpaid, before your credit card bills go unpaid. It's just a matter of time. Like my friend, like once I got to know her situation, I pretty much knew what was going to happen. And it's very predictable. So just like, you know, many people feel like he's fear mongering. He's like, once again, th this is common. And hopefully you are not going to be a victim of the great resignation, domestic abuse spike, because it's going to be nasty. It's going to be nasty. There's going to be a lot of pain. There's going to be a lot of suffering. And one of the big things that's going to happen with this is it's going to be the inheritance of a lot of children. A lot of children going to inherit 
this abuse pattern. They're going to inherit these bad abuse practices. They're going to inherit drug use. They're going to inherit poor anger, poor anger management skills. You know, the number one indicator if you would be married a long time is your anger management skills. That's a number one indicator if you would be married a long time, if you handle conflict well. Like if your wife comes to you and drops a heavy load on you, and if you could say, look, dear, let's discuss this and not get angry and not want to act out, that is a super indicator of you being married a long time. If you have a very low flashpoint threshold, that is an indicator that you will not be married a long time because you're a hothead. And who wants to be living with someone every time it's like, if I say this, they're going to go off. That's a lot of stress. That's a lot of stress. So we're about to see a shift in 2022, 2023, 2024, 2025. See, this is going to be a five year cycle. This isn't going to be just one year and we're going to be done. This is going to go on for a five or 10 year cycle. And essentially a lot of people are going to be reset because just like in my video talking about the supply chain, you know, like I'm suffering right now to get a key from Porsche is two months. Right now I have four cars waiting on parts. They've been sitting for two and a half weeks. So every time I have a renter mess up a car, I can be looking at two weeks to a month where that car would just be sitting, not making any money. So, you know, I've done some things. I made some stuff a little different because I've got some problem cars. The Porsche is a problem car. The Range Rover, which incidentally I had to file a police report on, is a problem car. And I'm beginning to see the patterns and I'm making some adjustments. But guys, hopefully this will not be you. Hopefully you will not get caught up in this cycle of abuse. Hopefully you will not become a victim of the great resignation because I've seen some videos that make me just shake my head. I in my life would never ever like, when I quit my job, when I quit my six figure job, I had a six figure business to run to. Let me say this again, actually a seven figure business, uh, GC solutions. When I left the use office furniture and I sold a new one, I made seven figures. I didn't make that in profit. <laughs> it was dismal in profit, but I had the ability to generate that type of revenue. And if I had knew what I was doing, I probably would have made like $300,000 in profit. So I had that ability. I had those skill sets that took me three years to develop three years from leading that boarding house to go into business environments, to starting my business. And I had a plan and I was calculated. I just didn't do this off a wild ass scheme. And like I said, be looking out for your neighbors. Be looking, be listening because this is going to be very, very bad. This is not going to be good. And a lot of women and children are going to be deeply impacted. And a lot of men, men get abused as well. So you're going to see abuse patterns. You're going to see the calls to 911. I had to call 911. It was different today. I don't know if that's because they're getting a lot of calls, but man, it, it's going to be different. In 2022, it's going to be a hell of a year because I'm already seeing what's going to crystallize in 2022. It is on its way in many sectors. It's already happening. Some people are already stressed out. They're going to beat their wives. They're going to kill their wives. Yes, kill. Because I'm going to tell you something as a man. One of the worst feelings in the world is to have a wife and children and not being able to provide. It is one of the worst feelings in the world, and this can irrevocably alter that man. But once again, how did the man get there? The decisions you made 10 years ago is why you are where you are today. Yes, that's the decisions you made 10 years ago and 20 years ago are why you are where you are today. 
So when you make a bad life decision, the repercussions can go through your life for decades. And this is why, if you noticed, I have changed my delivery and messaging because once again, there is the fantasy YouTube. I found this guy who's talking about these 80 and $90,000 credit cards. Okay. I know for a fact that the bank is not going to give you a $90,000 credit card when you're only making 30 K a year. They're not going to do it. That would be stupid for them because it would entice you to get in all types of trouble. So I see the videos and I call them YouTube candy. Hey, get the Navy credit card, $80,000 flagship. And I see this over and over and over and over again. And they're, they're, they're feeding you candy because the practical reality is nothing like that. And this is how people get in trouble. They're eating candy. They're eating mental junk food. They're thinking, Hey, I have a decent FICO score of 750. Sure. There's some bank that's going to give me like $500,000 in business credit. That's the apex of disaster. Do you know that having a lot of money to start your business without the required business skills is a recipe for bankruptcy? Let's say you have a 750 credit score and you can go out and get a million dollars in funding, but you don't know shit about running the business. What do you think is going to happen? What do you think is going to happen? It's just a matter of time before that money crushes you because you don't know what you're doing. And this is why I consistently say, start small, start building your business where you are with what you have, because if you're not used to managing a large sum of money, more than likely you're going to mess it up. And this isn't to say that you're stupid or dumb. It's the reality. Statistically, 70% of lottery winners are broke in five years because they don't know how to handle money. So you go ahead to the bank and get this million dollars in funding. And there, there, once again, the last recession, this happened here in Georgia, there was a real estate developer and he was never going to be poor, but because the real estate crash hurt him, his net worth was going to suffer a big hit. This man had a wife and three children and he committed suicide. Once again, he was never going to be poor. He was never going to lose his house. His business was going to lose a lot of money. He could not take the embarrassment of being reduced. So he committed suicide. And that's another uh, risk factor that's going to happen. That's going to spike up in 2022 suicide is coming. But if you notice, I've changed up everything around here. Like I'm not doing these super eye catchy thumbnails because I want to give you guys the truth, because if you have the truth, you make better decisions. And like I said, if you're one of those people who's thinking about quitting their job and you don't have a solid plan, hopefully this video will make you rethink that because once again, is there anything sexy and life altering, fulfilling about moving this box in the warehouse from this point over here? No, but if that's all you're qualified to do, hello, hello, until you requalify yourself for an upper skill set job. That's all you got. <laughs> I know. I mean, I, I may sound mean, but that's all you can do. That's all you can do. That's all you got until you requalify yourself. And I'm speaking from experience. I used to be just like you. I didn't know how to do none of this stuff. I didn't know how to create YouTube videos. I didn't know how to write a book. I didn't know how to look. I didn't know how to do none of this stuff. But as I requalified myself, all of these doors started to open. So hopefully you heard me and we're going to get back to training and stuff. So I'll be sending out emails and everything and we will start tuning folks up with the truth. Cause this is, this is ugly. I mean, it's really, really bad. 
So that's all I got for you guys. I will see you in the next one.